So, um, good morning. Thank you for attending a Sunday morning uh, talk. And, um, so today we're going to talk about uh, Android pa packers, how do they work, uh, we're going to analyze a few of them. And uh, I'm going to show a method we developed, a tool that can handle most, uh, uh, it, it's a generic way to handle most of uh, uh, the packers in uh, the market. So who are we? So um, I'm Avi, I'm uh, currently a founder at uh, MyDRO, but uh, I was formerly a mobile R&D team leader at Checkpoint for a few years, and this is where I did uh, this uh, research. And before that, I was a security research at uh, Lacoon Mobile Security. And uh, unfortunately, Slava, my uh, co-presenter, could not attend today, uh, but except being a very, uh, talented researcher and a good friend. He also did a lot of the heavy lifting around uh, this uh, research. Uh, we miss you, Slava. So um, let's go to business. So uh, boxing apps. Okay, so malware offers use various uh, boxing or packing techniques to prevent static code analysis and reverse engineering. Uh, malware offer invested a lot of time in developing his cool malware and he doesn't want, you know, uh, the security guys to understand what's happening, detecting it, they're using their automatic tools or uh, with manual reverse engineering. This is the same as in the PC world where most of the packers and most of the malwares today are packed. So how can one um, protect his code? So they can use a proprietary technique or a third party software that uh, can uh, protect the app's code. So what does this software should, should do? So this includes code protection, anti-debugging, anti-tampering, dumping, all of the methods that will prevent the security guys, um, the static code analysis engines, the reverse engineering from understanding what's happening inside uh, the app, the malware. And what was our motive to this research? So in the PC world, it's, it's for years now that uh, malwares are, uh, are uh, packed uh, by different packers. And also we see this trend rising in the Android world. And this is a snapshot of an analysis done in uh, Checkpoint Systems from uh, May. And we saw there that almost 25% of the packed apps were detected by us as malwares. And we asked ourselves, uh, can we uh, maybe improve the detection? Is this really the amount of malicious apps from the, all of the packed apps? Or maybe we're missing something because uh, we're not going and doing static code analysis or full static code analysis uh, for this app, these apps because they are packed. So this was our motive inside, in, in order to understand how packing works and to find a generic way to unpack them. So uh, what techniques uh, exist to protect, uh, to protect an app's code? So let's talk about the main three. We have obfuscators, packers, and protectors. So what is obfuscation? So obfuscation is um, adding redundant code to the, uh, to the main app's code that doesn't uh, affect the functionality of the app and changing the function names and the variable names. And this is done in order to prevent a reverse engineer to understand what's happening inside the app. And uh, today in, in the Android world, uh, there's a default uh, uh, obfuscator tool called ProGuard, which comes with Android Studio and used by most of the Android developers. And, but I have to say it's not the best obfuscator uh, in the market. And for a, a really not a really experienced reverse engineer, it shouldn't be any problem to understand what's happening inside the app. And another method which we are going to concentrate here today in our uh, talk is uh, packers. And what does packing do? So let's say I have an APK, an Android app, and it contains um, a DEX file. What's a DEX file? It's the smally uh, bytecode that what happen happens to the, uh, to the 
to the code after it, it's being compiled. And um, this is what Android executes. So I have the original uh, code. And what the, the packing process do is it takes this original code and encrypts it, packs it in some, in some manner. And the way it opens it, it adds a packer loader, which will be now the entry point for the execution of the app. And once the app is executed, the packer loader will take the bundled uh, original encrypted DEX file and load it uh, to the memory, uh, unpack it and load it to the memory so it can be used um, by the app. And um, there's also protectors that uh, works in a, in a bit of a different way. Um, they take the original DEX file but they don't only uh, encrypt it, but they also modify it. Uh, why they are doing that? Um, they want to add another layer of protection. Let's say one of the protectors uh, that we saw uh, in the wild uh, adds an encryption in a class level, meaning if only when a class is initiated. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Lovely. Um, the encrypted. Uh, only when a class is initiated, um, um, it will be decrypted. And what's surprising here that we didn't so see so, uh, a large use of protect protectors in the wild. And our what we thought is it might because it might affect the uh, the logic of the malware. Malware offers uh, don't use it as much as uh, packers. So we decided to concentrate in our research on packers. So in order to understand more on how packers work, we need to go back a bit to basics and understand some things about uh, Android. So let's talk a bit about ART, the Android Runtime VM. This is a schematic of uh, how things look in Android 6, which is good enough for us in order to understand this uh, world. So what happens, uh, how does Android uh, Runtime VM works? So the Android Runtime VM uh, can uh, work in, in two modes. One, interpreting the Smalley bytecode. Um, and the second is working uh, with a compiled bytecode ahead of time compilation. That was something that was introduced in Android 4.4. And what happens is when you install an app, it goes through a process of compilation and then the VM will work on a compiled uh, ELF code. And why this uh, was done, uh, this allows to gain uh, a lot of improvements in RAM, battery uh, performance, and runtime, startup runtime of the application. But it's important to remember that the VM can work in both ways, interpreting a Smalley code or with uh, a compiled uh, native. So, what happens when you load a DEX file, uh, when you start an app? So uh, you trigger the zygote process, which is an empty process that contains preloaded classes, and it's done in order to short the startup time of the app. And what happens, the zygote process forks itself into an empty app uh, process and loads the app code, the uh, old file. But what happens if the OAT file is missing? So what will happen is that it will trigger dex to oat that's the process that uh, compiles the DEX file into an OAT file, and will use the OAT file in order to execute the app. So I talked a bit about OAT files, and let's try to explain what, what is it. So OAT file is basically an ELF file with some uh, added uh, uh, sections. Um, one of them is OAT data, which contains the original DEX file, and one of them is the OAT exec, which, which contains the compiled uh, version of the DEX file. And both of these sections are used uh, by Android, the Art VM, uh, when executing an app. Uh, one is for uh, creation of different headers, and the one for inter interpreting the app. But it's important, again, to note that you don't have to have the native file, the, uh, all of the old exec, in order to execute an app. You can uh, backfall uh, to uh, the interpreted, uh, to the smaller version and interpret uh, the code. 
So, now that we understand a bit more about Android, let's try to think about ways to unpack an app. So the first one can be finding the algorithm. We can try to analyze the different packers, try to analyze how do they pack an app, which uh, algorithm they use, and um, do the back steps in order to uh, decrypt the app. The problem with this is that this doesn't scale. You need to understand each packer, how it works, and even if a packer only do a, a minor modification to the packing uh, algorithm, your uh, script will break and you need to start your research again. So this is not the way we wanted to go. Another method could be extracting a DEX file from the compiled OAT. As I said, we have uh, the DEX file inside the OAT. But what we saw in different packers is that you don't have to have the DEX file inside the OAT. You need only part of it. So some of the packers delete the DEX file from the OAT. So you can just take it and use, use the DEX file. Another uh, method might be dumping the DEX from the memory. But again, this is not uh, uh, always work, does not always work because um, the DEX file might, the DEX part uh, might be missing and, uh, um, and the packer will use the OAT file. So we wind up thinking about using a custom Android ROM, which uh, this is something we already do in uh, Checkpoint. Uh, we have a dynamic analysis engine. And uh, maybe introducing a few modifications to the custom Android ROM that will allow us to dump, uh, to place a few hooks in an interesting places. And this will allow us to dump the DEX file and uh, pass it to our static code analysis engine. So before continuing on, I want to uh, uh, talk about a few notable uh, works that uh, was done in this area. One of them was Android Hacker Protection Level uh, Zero. It was presented here in DEF CON a few years ago, and it's a very good talk that uh, talks about the different uh, packers and protectors uh, in the wild. And they also released a few set of scripts that dumps, um, that work on some of the packers and dumps uh, the DEX file. Another very interesting talk is uh, from the guys that released the DEX Hunter tool, which is a modified version of uh, the Android Dalvik or RTVM, and it really reconstructs a new DEX file from, from the memory. And while this is a very interesting project, it was not what we aimed for. We wanted to get the original DEX file before the packing process was began, uh, uh, was began in order to have the same hash as the original file. So we uh, want to go in a different path. So what was our approach? We wanted to find a solution that will require minimal changes to the Android source code, so it will be portable, and we work on most of the packers. And, um, so how, how did we do it? How did we address the problem? So we took the most popular packers that we witnessed in our systems and reversed them. We uh, additionally analyzed the way Android loads a DEX file in order to understand fully how it works. And the result was a patch of a few Android uh, lines of the Android runtime that will allow us to dump the files and uh, uh, analyze it in our static code analysis. So what were the analyzed packers that we looked on? So the most popular packers encountered were um, Baidu, Bankle, Tencent, Ali, and 360 Giago. And what's, uh, Baidu is the same huge Baidu Chinese company that you know. They also have a packing service. You, it's a web service, you send an APK, and you get the packed version uh, of it. Uh, it was very surprising to, to see that they offer this kind of service. So we, uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about Baidu and Banco. And what's interesting about them that they work in a bit in a different method, but covering both of them allowed us to find a solution that works on almost all of the packers we encounter, encountered. So let's try to think about the abstract way which in a packer should work. So um, as I said, you have the packer loader. It will load the bundled packed decks. So 
it will load the DEX. This will trigger libart, the art VM, um, to uh, work. And opening the, the DEX file, map its data to the memory, and uh, then you have the DEX in the memory. But something is missing here. Where does the unpacking process take place? So what we uh, thought is that most of the packing, uh, uh, unpacking process will be uh, inside a native lib, a nat a native lib function and uh, a file. And why? Because reversing of a native file, it's it will be harder for uh, reverse engineers. So it's a good idea to put your unpacking logic in an obfuscated and protected manner. And for that, you need to not do it in the, in the Java bytecode packer loader, but in a separate native file. And what does this native file do? It needs to uh, interject itself somewhere so it could uh, decrypt and unpack the, the packed file. So he will do it uh, with hooking. It, it might hook libart libc. And uh, do, now that when libart will open the file, the unpacking process will take place. And uh, in the end, libart will uh, get the original DEX file that it can execute. So cool, now that we thought about a uh, hypothesis of how a packer should work, we want to verify if it's really what we see in the field. So let's look about the, uh, on the first packer, Banco. So um, in order to identify Banco, uh, it's very easy. It has uh, uh, various classes which shows in every packed up by Banco and uh, different files, one of them is the native packer which is used to unpack an app and the packed version of the text file, dex file which is banco classes and this is a snippet of the java loader implementation and we can see that banco loads a native lib, uh, lib file and calls fujni which is a bridge between java and uh, calling native functions to uh, functions from this native file and then it loads the dex file which will trigger uh, libartso. So we wanted to understand what's happening inside the native file. So we tried to um, open it with IDA and it crashed. And uh, this is one step afterwards and uh, we could, uh, after we fixed it, and I'll explain in a second how we did it, uh, but what we noticed here that we didn't see uh, any mapping between the native functions and the functions uh, names in the Java interface, meaning something is missing here. Where does this mapping happen? So what, what we needed to do is understand the mapping. So I'll take a step backwards. And I said that IDA crashed. Why did IDA crash? We know that this file is in use, so it should work. But when we dumped um, the file headers using uh, the file headers, we saw that some of the uh, segments were missing. We didn't see the text segment. So um, uh, what we noticed is it is defined in the dynamic section and we had to manually reconstruct the different sections in the file um, from the info we got from the dynamic section, and then we could uh, uh, analyze it in IDA. But that wasn't enough, because even uh, when we uh, opened the file in IDA, uh, the entry point was not valid. It didn't point to anything interesting. So something else is happening here. So what happens here is that there's a call to an init function. Uh, from the dynamic section. And what does this init function do? So what it does is the native file contains a compressed section of the code and the init uh, function decompresses this uh, code and overrides the text section. And now the entry point, the original entry point of the ELF is valid. And what we saw is that one of the functions inside the native file is JNI and load. And JNI and load provides the mapping between the functions in the native file to the JNI, to the Java. So now we could understand uh, what does the function do. 
Okay. Um, so now let's see how bank call works. So um, the first function extracts a file from the assets. And the second one, which is the uh, interesting one, uh, forks three different processes. The first one is just the apps uh, process. The second one is an anti-debugging process, uh, which does different tricks in, the, in order to prevent us from uh, understanding what's happening. And uh, the fourth, third one is uh, only executes when the OAT file does not exist. And as we know, this mostly is the first time when the dynamic uh, dex when the dex is loaded, but it doesn't execute dex to oat uh, in a regular way. But it uses an LD preload in order to pre uh, to hook some of the functions in dex to oat and create a special kind of version of uh, an oat file. This oat file will be later uh, used by uh, RTVM. Uh, when executing the file. I hate Windows. Okay, so what does the hooking in, uh, uh, in Banco do? So um, on the left, so uh, it hooks eight different functions and we have here an example of one of the function hooks and the way it hooks them. So we can see on the left uh, an open add function, function uh, without any hooking. And on the right, we can see uh, the, uh, the hooked version. And we can see that the first bytes were overridden. And um, the, what it does, it changes the PC register in order to change the flow of execution to the pack, unpacking process of the app. So let's do a recap of Bankel and how it works. So it creates a stub, a packer loader uh, as a Java activity to load the native library. The native library is protected uh, with different anti-research uh, techniques that we had to bypass. And what it does, it hooks libc and, uh, for, uh, for the unpacking proce process. And uh, what it does is when uh, libart encounters the old file, it will unpack it and provide uh, an unpacked version to uh, the libart VM. So we understand how Banco works. Let's look on Baidu. So again, for classification, this is pretty uh, straightforward. We can see uh, that we have the stop application and the stop provider, um, which are the classes used by uh, Baidu. And again, a native lib and uh, the packed original dex. And again, the same, we couldn't see um, the mapping between the native functions used in, uh, in the loader to, uh, to the functions in the native lib. And uh, you can see that, uh, that um, again, uh, Baidu used the index section in order to decompress some of the code because again we couldn't see it in IDA and only after decompression we could understand what's happening inside the, the file and uh, again it is using the JNI load function uh, to provide the to provide the mapping and do some other uh, interesting stuff and these are the things it does. So it has an anti-debugging technique that I will uh, elaborate and uh, registration of the native methods, meaning the mapping between the JNI and the native functions. And it extracts the pack dex from the asset and create an empty dex file, not a node file, but a dex file and provide the hooking. So what are the anti-debugging techniques used uh, in Baidu? So we have obfuscation, uh, log disabling, uh, it checks that GDB isn't executed and JW JWP uh, isn't executed and a few other uh, more uh, anti-debugging techniques. And uh, we can see that the hooking in uh, libart uh, by Baidu is a bit different, it hooks the Android log print function in order to prevent any logging. So uh, if you try to debug it, you can't. It will be harder for you to understand what's happening. And uh, it hooks the execv function. 
um, and when Dex2 Oats is executed by Android, it prevents the compilation of um, the Dex file, meaning the Oat exec section it will be uh, it won't be empty, but uh, Android won't use it to execute the logic of the app. It will uh, fall back to uh, the Smiley code. And it hooks the function open, meaning when Android tries to look for the one.jar uh, file, instead it will decrypt the packed uh, dex file and supply it to libart VM. So again, let's see what uh, Baidu does. So it creates a stub in the Java activity. It, uh, the native lib is protected with different anti-research techniques. And it hooks libart for handling opening of the dex file. Well, this looks a bit familiar, but this is a different packer, or almost a different packer. So uh, what's... What can we understand from here? That most of the pack unpacking process might be generic with a few minor changes. We can see that the trigger for decryption by the different packers is uh, when, the, when uh, libc opens the file. And in Banco, it's when it's opening a class's uh, an old file. And in Baidu, it's when it's a, a, opening uh, the dex file. And uh, if we'll hook place hooks in the first places in uh, the libart VM process when uh, it tries to open an old file and a dex file and dump the files, we should have the decrypted version, the unpacked version of the dex file. So that's exactly what we did. We understood the way an app is loaded uh, by uh, the RTVM, and whereas the first place is we can place a hook uh, in the VM uh, in the co in the flow of uh, of loading, uh, so we can dump the the files. So one function in the out uh, loading process and one in the dex loading process. And as you can see. It's only a few lines of code. One is free and one's a few more. And this uh, allows us to dump the decrypted version of uh, packed files, packed text files. So let's see a demo. Okay, I'll try to, cool. So this is a demo of a tool we created that, uh, that will can ge uh, generic unpack most of the packers. And what you see now in the, in the background, we open now an app uh, which is packed. And you can see by Banco, and you can see the dex file, the packed dex file, which uh, you can't really understand what's happening here because it's packed. Now we will execute our app. And uh, it's uh, our tool, which is a, a, a a forked version of the AS prom of Android. And I'll try to fast forward this. And unfortunately, I can't. So we'll have to wait. So what's happening here is the Android uh, emulator is loading. And once uh, it's loaded, we will uh, load the app. And our hooks, our two different hooks, will dump two versions of this DEX file. One should be valid and one should be not. It depends how the packer works. Some of the packers hooks uh, in both places. Some of them hooks only one of the loading uh, in one of the loading uh, flows. Um, but this enables us to unpack the apps. So, um, well, this will take a few more seconds. Um, sorry. Okay, so how are you guys today? Um, what I can mention is that um, the hooking used by the packers are not persistent. They place the hooks during the loading process and then they remove it. So um, it, it's it, it's a good. Uh, it was we had to really understand when the hooks are placed 
so we could decrypt the you dump the text file in the right time because trying to connect uh, later on uh, with GDB and dump the memory or uh, execute or just dump it in afterwards after the app is already uh, executed won't always work. So it was crucial for us to understand the dex loading process. And uh, well, Android is so slow. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Okay, you'll have to believe, <laughs> believe me it works, but you don't need to believe me. You can download the tool uh, for yourself from our repository. Um, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not a compiled version of Android, but a patch that you can apply and the scripts that wraps the unpacking process. And you can go over them uh, execute them and uh, see that it works uh, and uh, enjoy. Um, so a summary. So we we understood how the packing process uh, works by different packers, and we only introduced a few minor changes to the RVM, and this enabled us to work on like ninety percent of the packers we encounter in our systems. And what was very interesting, we could this uh, change uh, allowed us to. Uh, to send an unpacked version of the text files to our static code analysis systems, and we got a 50% increase in detection of maliciousness of packed apps from this uh, from this uh, feature, which is uh, was very good uh, for us. Thank you, thank you. You're far too kind. And uh, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask.